Welcome to Section 8 Secrets Revealed. Today I am going to talk about how to get a Section 8 voucher. Who qualifies to receive a Section 8 voucher? How do you find where to even apply? What are the documents required to apply? Once your application is done, what's next? How do you bypass the waiting list? How the public housing agencies run the background check? Section 8 doesn't pay the full rent typically, so I'm going to talk about how that works and how that portion is broken down. And then I'm gonna talk about the catch to that portion, some things that you need to know. So lots to cover. Get out pen and paper, cause you're gonna to wanna to take notes and let's get started. mistakenly think in order to get Section 8, they just need to be poor. Go apply and the government will pay your rent directly to the landlord. Yay! But that's not exactly how it works. Section 8 is governed by HUD, Housing and Urban Development, and I got a lot of this information from their Chapter 5. If you go into the information below, I have a link to my blog, and in my blog on this subject, I have links to get to the HUD book that goes in really, really good detail about every one of these subjects. But in this video, we're, I'll try to just cut to the chase. They have a family definition, which is kind of, it seems like anybody could be a family when I read it, but if you're not sure if you're a family, be sure you read that chapter five. They talk about your income limits. You have to be a certain kind of poor, and they have three definitions of poor. And your citizenship, you have to be a United States citizen or, or have eligible immigration status. And you can't have any evictions for drug-related criminal activity, but it only goes back three years on that. How do you find a Section 8 office that is accepting new applications? It can be a challenge. And I've done some of my own Googling and researching, and Michigan has a list of all the Michigan State Housing Development Authority public housing agencies. So in your state, you're just gonna to have to look around and see if you can figure them all out. There are also different Section 8 offices that are attached to a city name. You can check out my video about what is Section 8 really, and I kind of go into that breakdown, why some of them have a private name and why some of them have a city name. I am in Detroit, and in Detroit there is a nonprofit group called Community Housing Network. They have a part on their website where you can sign up to get alerts each time one of the Section 8 offices open. Be sure you go to my blog or look at my notes below and get that link and sign up for that if you are in the Detroit area. So there are several documents that people need to apply. There are only so many vouchers and there's always like a waiting list to get your voucher. Some people are on the waiting list for up to seven years. So once your name is called, sometimes they do a lottery to pick who even get, whose application even gets looked at. But once you fill out your application, you want to do everything you can to get your name right up there at the top. And one of those things is to be super organized. So on my blog, I have the whole list of every document that you could possibly need when you walk in so that you are ready to roll. And once that application is done, then what happens? Well, you can wait, like I said, up to seven years. It's pretty bad. Now, there are other ways, you'll hear of other people that immediately got on Section 8, and you're like, man, that is just not even fair. But the way it works is they hold out um, certain openings. They don't give away every voucher. So each PHA, Public Housing Agency, will have enough vouchers for these emergency type situations. The people that have the emergency situations aren't just low income. They're low income and elderly, or they're a veteran, or they're a victim of domestic assault, or they are displaced or homeless people. So when that happens, they kind of get bumped up. So now I want to talk to you about domestic assault. So it's kind of, this is a touchy subject for landlords and the public housing agencies, because all those other qualifications that I listed, all are provable. You can prove you were homeless because you were in a homeless shelter. You can't show up to a PHA with a black guy and say, can you please put me at the top of your list? because unfortunately people lie and they don't have a way of figuring that out. So it's really quite tricky. And when I have had people come through who um, got bumped up on the list because they were a victim of domestic assault, I did have a conversation with one woman once and she said, 
there was so much she had to do to get herself a voucher. It wasn't showing up looking like, you know, you've been a victim. And a lot of times, unfortunately, it doesn't show. So how do you prove that? But uh, they have to take the provable people. So with this woman, she ended up in a shelter and she said they gave her this big white binder full of things to do. And it was quite a lot. She had to apply for every other assistance available. She had to apply for a job. She had to take all these classes. And then she had to live in the shelter. And once she did that and proved that she was doing it right, they had little apartments that she could, that they're, that their different assault victims could live in temporarily while they waited for an opening on Section 8. And that's what she did. But she said most people saw that white binder and they were like, I'm out, there's no way I can get through all that. But she did, and she actually put herself through school too. By the time that she came to me, she was almost done with a degree as a pastry chef. So that was a pretty good story. Once the applicant goes through and does the um, application, Section 8, or the PHA, puts them through their background test which I, as a landlord, I like that because I know what they look for in their background check. So that means that I don't have to do it. And the thing that I don't have to do is proving all the income. They have access to search engines that I do not. And they are able to pull up anything. People think they can hide things like some of their assets or some of their income. They cannot. Section 8 voucher holders cannot hide those things. And that's good for you as a tenant to know and you as a landlord to know. But that doesn't mean that you don't, as a landlord, have to go through a background check. You still do. It's still, I, I still put them through my entire process, which I have described here. Before I even show a house, when somebody calls, I have a way of finding out if someone has Section 8 or not. And I go through a whole list of questions before I even show them a house. And I teach in this video here the process. Now these are all in my playlist. There's a little arrow down there that you can click on and you can see my whole Section 8 Secrets Revealed playlist. But those are the thumbnails. A lot of people think that because they have a Section 8 tenant that that means this person is not a felon. Sometimes there are felons. I know because I run my own background check and I run it for felonies. I have found though that the felonies that Section 8 will accept happen to be the same felonies that I will accept. I don't have a blanket rule that absolutely no felons can rent from me. And even in Detroit, there's a rule that you can't make that your absolute thing. I, I do not rent to felons is a form of discrimination because there's a lot of felons that have reformed and there's different situations about things that you look at. And when, you, when I talk to the tenant, I make a judgment call if that's something that would affect my income. That's the only reason that I am allowed to discriminate against somebody is if it's going to affect my income. One of the really cool things that I like it that Section 8 does is when they get that income figured out, way better than I ever could, they say to the tenant, now you have to pay 30% of this to the landlord. We'll pay the rest of your rent. I like that because when I have a tenant that falls behind on her rent and she's like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, I couldn't pay the rent. I know that she could have paid the rent, but she probably chose to spend the money on other things. I had a tenant tell me once that she chose to spend it on a prom, so she just wouldn't pay that rent that month. I evicted her, and when we cleaned out the house, we saw all these souvenirs from Las Vegas, so I'm like, whoo, her problems were deep, her choices were not good. So there's a little catch, though, to that 30% rule, and that is when a tenant goes, when their income changes. Every year we had this one tenant that worked for the Detroit Lions and she only worked seasonally, but it always took her particular Section 8 office two to three months before they would figure out that she's not working anymore and start paying me the full rent. And in that gap time, I knew she couldn't pay the rent. So I didn't charge late fees or anything because I, I know this woman and I knew that she would be able to catch up once her Section 8 office caught up. And you can't do that with everybody. And what I do in that case is if it takes more than a month for the Section 8 office to figure it out, I do the eviction process. And when the tenant presents the letters from the court saying they're gonna take me to court on this day, you gotta fill that paperwork in, they are way more motivated to do it. And I make sure to tell the attorney don't take this all the way to court, make sure this does not end up on her record. It is a little bit of extra paperwork, but I have a video on uh, the different paperwork in my playlist that you can watch too. Once again, my blog has a lot more details about how to get a Section 8 voucher, and it's got a link to that HUD Chapter 5 that really will help you if you are a tenant to know if you will qualify or not, and to use that in case you get a caseworker that maybe missed something or didn't do it right.
Be sure you check out my whole playlist on Section 8 Secrets Revealed and check out my playlist on investing in Detroit. I love to work with investors who want to buy my properties that are completed. Subscribe and check out my latest upload. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below.